Community Producers. I'm your host, Carmen Strike. The Community Producers is a program featuring stories and segments from local volunteers here in Southern Alberta. In the first segment, we're going to go to Lethbridge Animal Services to see which animals are available for adoption. I'm Officer Skylar Plourd with Lethbridge Animal Services, and you're watching Pet Talk on Community Producers. April 8th to 14th is Animal Care and Control Appreciation Week, and on this month's edition, we'll be talking about our agency's role within the community. The role of animal services within the city of Lethbridge is to ensure that both people and pets can live happy and safe within the city. We have two operations, the Animal Shelter and our Bylaw Enforcement and Animal Control. Our animal control peace officers work 365 days of the year providing animal control and bylaw enforcement to the city of Lethbridge as well as Lethbridge County. Our officers spend their shifts patrolling our parks, pathways and green spaces within the city, conducting leash enforcement and licensing compliance checks. We also investigate complaints of barking dogs, dangerous animals, dogs at large and animal bites. In 2017, our agency handled over 3,500 calls for service. With those calls, our officers investigate and can lay charges under local bylaws and submit evidence to the courts. Cats and dogs that are found as strays within the city of Lethbridge and Lethbridge County are brought to the city animal shelter. Our animal care staff work to ensure the animals are properly taken care of, including any medications, feeding and exercise. Animals that are not claimed by an owner from the shelter are placed into our adoption program. All animals are spayed or neutered, given their first set of vaccinations, and then adopted out. In 2017, our animal care staff handled 920 plus animals through the shelter. All of the staff at Animal Services work very hard to ensure that the city has an effective animal care and control program. If you have any questions or concerns, you can contact our office at 403-320-4099. If you'd like more information about bylaws or pet adoptions, you can visit lethbridge.ca slash animal shelter. Check out our Facebook page at Lethbridge Animal Services. And don't forget, you can stop by and visit with our adoptable pets anytime and share their photos, videos, and stories on your social media using the hashtag opt2adoptyql. So uh, we offer uh, like a different array of training, um, kind of depending what type of training you're looking for, whether it be for weight loss, um, if you had, let's say, like a hip or knee replacement, if you wanted um, help getting the strength back in that area, we um, help and train for that. Um, as well as we offer Tai Chi and yoga classes as well to help with overall health. Um, you always want to keep on being active um, just because you know you're healed and starting to feel a be better doesn't mean you should give up so we definitely want to keep your strength going we want to um, train you help you and work with you to be the best possible you can be and that doesn't stop just when you start feeling okay we want to keep at it and um, yeah we're here to help with that Yeah, you can kind of just uh, maybe like start doing some like little simple things before to kind of get in the groove of coming in the gym and working out with us. Um, but as far as like full on workout plans and all that, we will get that set up for you what is right for you. Yeah, I mean, we haven't been open for very long, just uh, since September now. So our results are still kind of like a little slow because we're just starting up. However, um, my one client who I've had since the beginning, her change is totally drastic. Like what she can do now compared to what it was before has completely changed. And it's really awesome to see that. So every Wednesday night we offer Tai Chi at 5.30. Um, if you are a member, you're free, will to, you're free to come. Uh, and if you, uh, for drop-ins, it's $10. And Thursdays uh, we have yoga at 6 p.m.
Next up, Constable Kara Hagen provides post-secondary students with tips for staying safe. On this segment of Cop Beat, we want to talk about campus safety. So a lot of different things can happen on the campus. Sometimes there's morning classes, afternoon classes, night classes, you're there for sporting events, you're there to work out, you're there to just hang out, late night projects. Whatever the case is, the campus is busy throughout the day all the times of the year. So we want to make sure that you take a few steps to make sure that you're safe. So there are call boxes throughout the campus. So make sure that if you, something's off or you feel like someone's following you or you just have that spidey sense, listen to it, listen to your gut, go hit the box and the security will come. Make sure that you keep the, secure, the campus security phone number accessible in your uh, cell phone contacts. Might be nice to keep it in your favorites so you can quickly open it up and call it if you need help. If you are going to be there late on campus um, into the night or into the late afternoon or the evening, you can try your best to park as close to the doors as possible. Another little tip I like to remind people of is make sure that you're digging in your bag, your backpack, your purse, whatever it might be, prior to leaving the building to get your keys out, to have everything put away so that you can easily get to your vehicle, get in, lock the doors once you're in, then store away your stuff. You don't want to be wasting your time digging through your purse or your bag outside of your car, not paying attention to what's going on around you. Make sure that when you're walking, you don't have your earbuds in or headphones on. We want those off so you can hear people around you, you can hear your surroundings, see what's going on, and you're more attentive to what you're doing. Another easy tip is to always walk with a buddy. So strength in numbers, we like to remind people that the buddy system is important. Walk with a buddy. Make sure that if you are late, people know where you're going to be, when you're expected to be home, and if you're not home, what they can do. Local comic artist Amanda Deggy Thompson is featured in this next story by our very own Ryan Craddock. Funny story. Uh, <laughs> it was my uh, it was my uh, handle or username handle that I. Um, picked when I was 12 years old and logging on to Neopets for the first time. <laughs> and it's just, just kind of stayed my thing ever since. <laughs> I've always, uh, I've always enjoyed doing it. I've drawn a lot when I was a kid and, and uh, I always was the, the person that my classmates would go to when we had an art assignment and they said, hey, can you draw a dog for me? <laughs> can you draw a cat for me? Can you draw this for me? And uh, they'd always come to me for it like all throughout grade school. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I just always liked to draw. I would always draw in my notes and like all the margins were always full of doodles and um, and I just, I loved everything creative. I loved animation and cartoons and, uh, and I just, I really liked like the idea of painting and um, I tried watercolor, wasn't very good at it. <laughs> it's very difficult, um, but uh, yeah. And then after I, I learned there's an art program, you can actually like take classes to learn how to be like better at arts, I guess. I don't know. That's uh, then I came to the art program at the university, and uh, and I I've, I have really enjoyed doing um, all the classes and learning. I started it as my first web comic, uh, thanks to uh, Eric and his Slaughterhouse Slew comic, um, and he uh, he actually kind of pushed me to start doing it because I didn't have a web comic and I always talked about wanting to do one, and and so I figured like doing a little journal comic would kind of be the way to go, um, and uh, and so that's I started with that and. Uh, um, I don't update it as much anymore um, because I've got some other work and comics going, but I still do occasionally. I actually updated it maybe two weeks ago. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I just kind of started like just, it's mostly a journal comic. It's about like funny stuff that happens in my life or whatever, right? And, uh, and, uh, and I happen to live in Lethbridge and so it's the Windy City and so I called it the Windy City. <laughs> Misty Waters is uh, it's a fantasy narrative kind of comic, um, and it's uh, unlike Windy City. It's um, it's like full color, um, and Windy City is just black and white because it's easier. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, I've I've wanted to do a web comic that is a narrative and a full story with like characters and and that kind of stuff. Um, and so that's kind of been my pet project, I guess. Uh, and I I try to update it once a month every Monday. 
Um, and so that takes a lot of time, <laughs> especially with a full color comic. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, it's, uh, it's about these two pirate girls, um, Zoe and Olivia, and uh, they kind of live in this seafaring area called the, the Venian Sea. And, um, and there's like a mystery, there's like magic and stuff. And, uh, and there's like a mysterious island kind of out on the horizon that no one can really approach. And it's just kind of like, what's there? What's going on? You know, and there's, there's some magic shenanigans, I guess, and, and pirate shenanigans in general. In episode two of Energy Healing, Kim Brigitzer gives us an inside look into an energy healing session. Welcome to today's segment on energy healing. I'm Kim Brigitza and today we'll talk about what happens during an energy healing session. The aim of the session is to free your body from heavy energies which can be the cause of problems and unhappy life situations. The lighter the vessel or body is, the healthier and happier person can become. A session lasts about one hour. First the client describes a topic and we have a short preliminary conversation about what is troubling them be it emotional problems, physical symptoms, negative thoughts, or life situations. Clients usually come with topics such as anxiety, fears, sadness, depression, headaches, backache, constant worries, relationship problems, or stress. I will be happy to work with you to find the right topic. Write down your topics in just a couple of sentences. More preparation is not necessary. Then I work approximately 30 to 40 minutes on releasing the blockages. This will be resolved by giving the client space to let the heavy energy surrounding them free itself, which is felt as a sensation of peace and calmness. All this happens at an energetic level and the client usually observes sensations in their body. After the treatment, we talk about what you have experienced and I will tell you about any imprints that have come up during the session. It is recommended to have three sessions for a specific issue over the course of about four to six weeks with approximately one to two weeks in between. Some of the issues might take longer to resolve depending on the severity of the initial underlying trauma. Sessions can be performed in person or remotely via phone, WhatsApp or Skype. There is no difference in intensity by having a session in person versus any remote method. For more information, please visit my website at www.kimbrigitza.com. Hi, I'm Karina Barker from Mike Mountain Horse Elementary School. I teach grade three here, and we've just been launching our project this morning, our Lethbridge, looking at Lethbridge Public Forum. The kids have had to work for the last two and a half months on designing and planning their own structures, structures for what they feel would improve the quality of life in Lethbridge. They've had to do research projects for them to discover what cities have in Canada compared to Lethbridge, as well as, as, well as around the world. The kids have been engaged in having to draw their blueprints and constructing 3D models of their project. They had to research constraints that might have an impact on their ability to build their project and what actually is needed in Lethbridge to improve the quality of life in our city. Uh, the kids have had to learn many things through this process. They've had to learn how to do survey projects and graphing in order to determine what other people have for opinions on what they liked to see in Lethbridge. They had to work on their blueprints, which required them to use some measurement tools and learning about perimeters so that they actually had to make the blueprint realistic to what an actual architectural blueprint would look like. They studied the constraints that people face when they're building structures. They had to look at constraints such as environmental constraints. They had to look at financial constraints, spacing constraints, time constraints, uh, things for related to weather for what they would like to build, whether they were going to build something that was an indoor or an outdoor structure. Structure. They've also had to learn about different ways to join their models. They had to use their knowledge of joining different materials to build their actual model and make it a 3D structure that was able to represent their blueprint accurately. 
It's a project that the kids were highly engaged in. All kids were super involved in the project. They asked to do it on a daily basis. They loved to be hands-on. They loved to be learning through actually having to construct something that meant something to what they wanted to see in Lethbridge. And they learned about how to improve the quality of life in our area through what we have and through what we might need to see in Lethbridge in the future. Five Days is a Canada-wide event that uh, a bunch of schools put up and they support local charities. So here in Lethbridge we're supporting Woods Homes. All the proceeds go to them. Uh, and basically five, five students um, basically in an attempt to simulate homelessness and raise awareness, uh, try to raise money for Woods Homes. So today's obviously been like the worst of the worst uh, out of the days, but thankfully like it wasn't pretty windy these other, other couple days. Um, their shack like is pretty good at helping them like you know stay sheltered it's definitely to raise awareness like the students understand that like hey this is an event to it's it's to raise awareness and and their students at the end of the day they get they under, after these five days they get to return to their bed but for some people that's not their reality and um, yeah they're doing their best to raise money and and then we can affect lives here locally in Lethbridge the fundraising goal is twelve thousand dollars yeah and donations can be accepted at five days.ca just make sure to follow to the ULeth um, donation page uh, these guys have been doing a great job like seriously they've made my life so much easier and it's been nothing but fun Funding for five, day, for five days of homelessness um, actually goes to the staffing costs because uh, we do have a shortfall every year, um, and that's one of just yeah one of the the funds that that we we put towards our basically those staffing costs to, uh, to just basically keep our shelter doors open. So we're based out of Calgary. Um, we're a regional program of those of the of the Calgary office. Uh, we've been here in Lethbridge since 2003. The shelter doors opened. Um, uh, we. At that time, we served kids just, uh, we have an eight-bed uh, shelter that we would serve kids that uh, were in distress or family conflict or didn't have a place to go, so, you know, we were able to give a bed. Uh, we've become so much more since since that time. We now offer um, counseling services, wraparound services, um, the ability for kids to uh, just beyond, you know, the, having a place to stay um, and, and food and clothing and all that. We're just able to hook them up to the different resources that Lethbridge has to offer. I think one, um, it just creates it, it just creates a buzz. Um, uh, you know, we've been doing this for years. We've been a recipient of this for years from from the management uh, student society here at the University of Lethbridge, and just so thankful for the the work that they do and what Five Days of Homelessness stands for. Because uh, to see to see homeless youth is um, it, it's just uh, it, it's not it's not good. It, it's um, it, it can lead to a life of entrenched homelessness. So I. I mean, uh, with the city of Lethbridge and their 10-year plan to end homelessness, um, now it's reverted, you know, and that plan is now over, and, and we're moving on to a new chapter, um, dealing with those younger children that, um, you know, 16, 17-year-olds that may, even 15-year-olds that are homeless in our city, um, Woods Homes is, is a safe place for them to come to, and we just have the resources to, you know, to hook them up to uh, more per, uh, per supportive housing through our housing housing first programs and that too. So, well, I just I just want to thank. Thank the, like I said, thank the Management Student Society. Every year it's just always refreshing to see these kids, these young adults come out and take time out of their busy schedules. Um, and as you can see today, we got another blizzard. So uh, for them to, to go through these, um, these conditions and probably just have a lived experience, I think not only does it give them the opportunity to give back, um, but it just gets them the, the opportunity to, ex, you know, to experience and see um, how, other, you know, how other people live. And I, I think that's that's a lifelong learning experience for them. So, and we're we're very thankful for you know for the funds we do receive from them. So.
Hi everybody, my name is Aaron Chubb. I'm here at the University of Lethbridge. I work at the Student Success Centre. I'm speaking today for Shaw TV. We are in the middle of uh, midterm season, or just kind of near the end of midterm season here. I'm preparing for an exam that I have that opens next week. So I'm one week away from the exam, so this is about the time that I normally kick it into high gear. I have been studying a little bit every day leading up to now, but now it's really time to bring it all together. I've already done all my readings, so so I've done that. I have uh, attended all my classes, and I've and I've organized my notes. But now, what do I do? What what I don't want to do is simply just reread everything that I've already gone over. So I've had to do the readings. I, I've done the assigned readings. I've had to write down these notes. But if I simply just reread over and over and over, it's going to lead to me recognizing the terms or the definitions or the concepts. Oh, that looks familiar. I remember that. But I don't necessarily know if I've truly understood it or if I've, uh, if I've memorized it um, until I get to the exam and I don't want that so I'm going to find a couple different ways to look at it. I see that in this textbook there's questions at the end of the chapter so that's one way I can certainly evaluate my learning so I'll be going through those those questions I'm not going to cheat while I'm going through those questions I'm going to actually try and give it an honest effort and answer them before I look at the answer so that I truly know if I if, if I understand or if I if I can remember that information I have my notes here and I've written down little questions beside my notes um, I don't know if the camera will be able to pick that up, but and you'll have to excuse my writing folks it's it's some real chicken scratch going on here but I have some questions written down beside the slides that I can ask myself so I'll, I'll be covering these up and quizzing myself as I go through them and so then I'm not just simply going through the motions I'm testing myself I'm really seeing whether I understand that stuff or not but that's not the only way I'm going to study so th this is still just one way. I'm just quizzing myself on the material and I want to kind of cut it a couple different ways so I'm seeing it from a variety of perspectives. So I have a study group that we're going to be meeting at 2 o'clock today and we'll be going over this material and trying to explain it to each other. To prepare for that uh, the meeting, I've been going through and writing down questions. I like to circle my questions so it's really quickly to, uh, I'm able to identify them really quickly. So I'm having, I have this list of questions that I'll bring to my study group and see what other people think about these questions. If we're not able to resolve them then, then maybe I'll bring them to the professor after that. So I'm preparing for that study group. It'll give us all a chance to explain stuff in our own words, check our understanding against other, other students' comprehension. Do we, do we all, are we all on the same page here? In which case it kind of gives a little bit more validity that we're all on the right track. Not 100% certain, but nothing really ever is. Now what else can I do? I think I'm going to be, I think I'm going to be trying to draw a mind map, I think, um, because I, I, I feel like with I'm just going through and memorizing this um, that I that I have a bunch of facts in my head but it is, sometimes it's difficult to get your head around the big picture so I think I'll be uh, I think I have a whiteboard marker here it is so I think I'll be taking this this one chapter that I'm working on and I'll be mind mapping it a little bit uh, go back to the beginning here of the chapter I like to use the table of contents as kind of a guide when I'm working through the mind map. Um, so we're looking at the nature of perception. So I'll, I'll start up here with the, with the nature of perception. And we have the, we're, we're going to talk about the, the visual system's functional anatomy. We also have the different neuronal activity that's happening. Then we have all the different pathways. Now each one of these, I'm going to go through my, my, my readings with an eye of, of populating these, these areas. So each of these is going to get a whole bunch of different subpoints. Uh, when I get to the pathways point, I'm probably going to write out the, how the pathway works so I can get my head around it. And there's probably, it's probably not so linear. There's probably a lot of other pathways that it goes in. Functional anatomy, I think I might actually draw the eye. I think I might draw, and now I'm a horrible drawer. Uh, I'm not an artist by any means, um, but that's not the point. So I'm going to draw the, I'm going to draw the um, iris and the and the pupil and 
we'll have the, the retina at the back here and we have our little, oh, this is horrible. Uh, you turn the camera away. It's, I'm a horrible, I'm a horrible artist, but it's, it's helping me get my head around things. And so the point here is not to create a work of art. The point here is to start visualizing the information, to get it on, um, onto something bigger so I can see the big picture. This probably isn't making too much sense to the folks at home, but because it's, it, it's really a representation of my understanding of the material thus far. So that's going to help me get my head around the big picture as well. I think those discussions later on in my, in my study group will help. I do have flashcards, so I'll be using those as well. Now, the way I've organized my notes, they're kind of like flashcards, but I like also having something that I can carry with me. These, these textbooks, they get a little bit heavy. My back isn't what it used to be. So I'm going to be using flashcards on a web, free website called Quizlet, put them into my phone, and then I'll be able to use those throughout the day, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. Now, I won't use that today at this session because I'm sitting down, I'm able to spread those materials. I'll focus more on my notes and quiz myself on that and make use of this whiteboard behind me. So again, when you're studying, making sure you're not just trying one approach, try a couple different approaches so that you're seeing it from different perspectives, so that you're getting an idea of the big picture, and that you're studying actively, you're not simply rereading over and over and over. So just kind of my thought process as I'm going through, going over this material. For Shaw TV and the Student Success Center at the University of Lethbridge, I'm Aaron Chubb. Thanks for watching. Well, it's our 12th, going into our 12th year with UFA and Aggie Days, and um, I don't know, it's, it's, my term is dirt to dinner, and I think young people need to understand where their food actually comes from, um, and it kind of is a morph off of, uh, of uh, maybe the farmer's market too, because we have such a great attendance and, and support for the farmer's market, but it's important for the young people to see that their food actually does come from the ground and, and not necessarily just a, a grocery store. So. Uh, with the five or six thousand people that we hope to do on April 24th and 25th with the schools and and with the public, uh, we hope that education and uh, and just everything that's there will, will be a, a good experience for them to, to learn. We do have more exhibitor space available. The exhibitor space is free, but it must be ag related um, to come into it. Um, our exhibitors. Uh, at Exhibition Park for Aggie Days get the space free. They donate their time for two days and a day of setup probably. Um, and we have sponsors that, that promote the program. So it's a community event, not just for Lethbridge, but also Southern Alberta. We'll get probably 40 schools from the region and uh, hopefully, you know, uh, 5,500 to 6,000 people coming through from public. Fortis, Alberta are very strong on the electricity and how, how to be safe in your house, in your farmyard if you're, if you're coming from a rural area. Uh, we've got the potato growers, we've got the chicks. Uh, a lot of the urban people don't get a chance to see these animals live, uh, you know, so, so there's those experiences, uh, but they're just more than a furry little chick or a furry little whatever. Um, unfortunately, some of those end up on plates, but at the same time, uh, that's part of the education that this is about. Um, and. Uh, uh, we'll have hopefully over 40 exhibitors, uh, we're at I think 32 now, so, uh, so more to come and we've got space. Thank you for watching this edition of the Community Producers. I'm your host, Carmen Strike. If you have any story or segment ideas, please email them to us at shawtv.lethbridge at sjrb.ca. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.